thanks to the supporters of channel member links you're absolutely right mrs weirman if there has been a little bit of confusion about how my discount code works for fm21 so i'm just i'm gonna, I'm gonna do what we talked about earlier i'm just gonna jump straight in there and just show everyone very quickly yeah good plan right it is super simple um and the confusion has been around the fact that i'm quoting a price of 32 39 but then when you click on the link and go through to the two game website it shows you the steam price of 35 pound 99 and i'm getting a few people feedback to me kev it's not showing up as the right price all you need to do hit buy now um and then once you go through to check out and log in um once you're through to this next screen it'll eventually get us through to you just type the discount code Lelujo in there, which you can see I've already done because I've already bought a copy of the game. Um, type Lelujo, hit apply, and then you get the discount applied here. And you can see the price you then get at checkout is $32.39. And as I explained before, not only do you get it a little bit cheaper than you do on Steam or on the Epic Store, but it also supports the channel as well. Win-win for everybody. Keeps Mrs. Wormuth in spaghetti. What more could you want? Hello and welcome to part 105 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final two group games in this year's Champions League against Zenit St. Petersburg and FC Porto. Since you were last with me, um, we've uh, we had a little bit of a, a little bit of a slip off the back of the Barcelona game in the last episode. We then went to Doxa Drama, Doxa Dramas, Dramas, and um, only drew nil nil, and then only beating Powak. 1-0. So we've only scored one goal in our last three games. I'm not going to say the wheels are falling off, but they're loose and we need to get them back engaged again. Um, we do still have the very good team cohesion, excellent dressing room atmosphere though, so we should be fine. I'm always uncomfortable having so many players who are currently concerned. So we need to we need to cheer some of these boys up or maybe move some of them on. But look at them. don't want to move any of them on. They all need a good tickle. Milo's the big problem because we've got descent within the squad although actually it's three players who are backing me over milo which is nice to have sanchez carnavali and chermont all backing me but it does obviously lead to disagreements in the team for a player who is our key player so we just need to settle them down has anyone made a legend legend yet i tried to keep checking no oh I, I did now did i mention in the last episode paul duffy signed a contract extension i think i did he has I'm sure i mentioned it I'm sure because I'm sure I mentioned my evil plan for him. If I didn't mention the evil plan, let me know down in the comments and I'll tell you all about the evil plan. If not, it was probably in the last video. But this is the team for the Zenit game. A win here and we're good. Um, let's just double check the, uh, do a little bit of Kev maths, double check the situation. A win here and we are through, but not necessarily top in the group. Barcelona playing Porto in Porto. So, I mean, if Porto were to beat Barcelona... Here comes the Kev maths. If Porto were to beat Barcelona and we beat Zenit, we will win the group. Regardless, we just need to win the match and then we're then we're through to the knockout rounds. And that's all that's important. So it's Tanesi in goal, a back four of Kansarovic, Hernandez, Jair and Solazano. Bill Bow at the base of the midfield in the absence of Milo, who is suspended for today's game. Um, if you remember way back when we first signed Bill Bow, one of the justifications for bringing him in as a replacement at the time for Caio Henrique um, was that he could also play as a defensive midfielder. Not brilliantly, but now Michaelis has moved on as well. Bill Bow kind of steps into that Michaelis role of being the centre-back who occasionally steps forward and plays at the base of the midfield. And we then got Dominguez and Leica in central midfield. Chermont, Carnavali and Pedraza are the front three. Uh, Richard is proving to be a little bit of a problem because he keeps picking up little niggling injuries. Um, you can see that since joining us in the summer, um, he's had a broken arm, a tight thigh, pulled knee ligaments... He's just not able to get going with a run in the team. Um, you can see that he's either injured or just coming back from fitness, gets a start, um, but, then, but then I don't select him. But, I mean, it's because he wasn't fit, um, and he gets a start there, and then he's not fit for that one, and then he comes off the bench and he gets a start, but then he's not fit for the next one, and that seems to be the pattern with him, and now he's picked up an injury. But he's not actually played. He's not started two consecutive games for us yet, and I worry... I'm not worry worried yet, but I am worrying a little bit. Even now, he's only able to play 75 minutes, which is why I'm not starting him in this game. What he really needs is a run of four or five starts in a row, and then I think we'll start to see the player that we thought we were signing when we brought him in. But at the moment, just can't get him fit. Right. 
we would like to... So I don't want to talk about securing qualification. Important match for us. Make sure you get... No, not a good performance. We want to win. Why is there not one that just says, I want you to win? I don't want to say, I want you to qualify. I'm going to do it. Ah, it motivated them. Awesome. Sometimes, especially with a club like Apollon, who are in a group with Barcelona, putting too much pressure on the competition itself breaks the players a little bit, but it looks like they didn't mind that one so much. Tedic is the guy that we wanted to sign. I think he was at Manchester City was released from City and went, I think, to Powock, and we tried to sign him at the time. It's interesting to see that he's now a Champions League-level striker, and if he had have come into us, would we have been having all these striker shenanigans that we've been having ever since Damien left? Probably, because I imagine he's not Champions League winning quality. He's probably just good enough to play for Zenit in the Champions League, or he'd be somewhere a little bit better. But then Odegaard's in their team as well, so it's not that they're just... Full of losers. Odegaard's always good in Football Manager, as we know. Um, Carnavali plays it out to Leica from the corner. Bill Bow's there. He's six foot six, you know. I'm punching the microphone in joy. And it's a first goal of the season for Bill Bow. And of course, it's a header because he's a big lad. And uh, that puts us 1-0 up. And as mentioned, any kind of victory will get us through to those knockout rounds. Barcelona are ahead against Porto as well. So... As it stands, we'll still have to get a result against Porto to be sure of winning the group because you've got to expect Barcelona to beat Zenit in the final group stage. But we just need to not mess up from here. Pedraza's charging down this right-hand side, ruining everybody for pace and trying to get across. In fact, plays it back to Solazano, who's got options, one of which is Bill Bilbao. Bilbao with a cheeky little pass to Leica. Dominguez is getting involved as well, and now we're trying to release Solazano on the right. Just hit it first time. In fact, he keeps it in really rather well. Plays it back to Bilbao, and I would have preferred a cross, but it's, I mean, it led to a good opportunity. We're playing some very good football, and we've got a corner out of it, and it's going to be Leica to swing one in, looking for all the big lads we've got in the middle there. It ends up getting cleared straight back out to Leica again, who puts it back in first time, but can't find Dominguez. But Chermont has picked up the scraps, and he's charging into the air, crossing, looking for Pedraza. And I think, did we win a penalty? We didn't. It's a free kick to Zenit. But that was some a good a good spell of pressure that seems to be continuing with Dominguez with an in-swinger. Um, Hernandez is there at the near post, but can't get uh, full contact with it. He's only five foot. What a goal. What a goal from Pedraza. I was on the verge of tweaking the corner instructions. I think I've got Hernandez playing in the normal Bill Bow position, which means five foot ten Hernandez is the one we're aiming for from the corners. And as you see there, he's not very competitive doing it. But who needs to be good in the air when you've got Pedraza who can just step up and score from an inexplicable angle, squeezing it into the tiniest of gaps between the goalkeeper and that near post. He's got no right to score that goal from that position. But to score it, he did. And we're now 2-0 up and it's st it's still not even half time yet. And it's been all Apollon, 62% of the possession. Then it have only had one shot on target so far. Now Solazano plays it across to Chermont, who's in acres of space, but can't force it into the back of the net. Save from the keeper. But the move just continues. We're the first to every ball here, apart from that one, which is leading to a counter-attack, which could lead to a goal. Uh, Tennessee makes the first save and not the second. And I think what we've done there is committed too many men forward. And we should be pretty disappointed with ourselves here. We've left only two men back because both fullbacks are pushed up and getting involved. And Tennessee's great, but not great enough to be able to get back up and make the second save. He needs he needs someone there to support him and maybe stop the move before it gets to that stage. 2-1 doesn't do us any justice at all based on how well we've played in that first half. They've made a change at half time. We need to grab another goal. Can Saravic in swinger Dominguez with the header that goes just over. Barcelona still ahead against Porto. Have we got a latest score from there? It's still 1-0 to Barcelona. Porto have missed a penalty in that game as well. And now Solazano with another long throw. But it's cleared again by Zenit. And we need to be careful about their counter-attacks. We've already been caught out by them once. We don't want to be caught out a second time. There's a ball over the top there that Carnavale really should be chasing on to. He's a quick little nippy striker who should, that should be his bread and butter, ball over the top for him to chase. And he just kind of watched it go over his head. What an incredibly frustrating man. And now we've given the ball away on the halfway line and Zenit are in again here. And if it, if it ends up 2-2, I'm going to be rightly pretty miffed. What is happening here? Richard, get warming up. 
It's 2-2 two, two and it's unacceptable. I'm not even sure what the what the connotations are if it's 2-2. Two, two. Does this leave a door open for Porto, maybe? If we draw this game, but Porto still lose. I mean, that's a perfectly placed shot. Kev maths. It doesn't matter, is the headline there. But it matters to me. We should be beating Zenit. We're in a sticky patch of form. And this is the kind of game that we need to use to play ourselves back into some form. It's not enough just to, just to sneak into the knockout rounds via the back door. We need to charge our way through. Smash that door open. Right, we're going to put Carnavali out wide and bring Richard on up front. Give him 20 minutes. Jair is not having a very good game. But Solazano's tiring. And we know he does get tired. Bless his cotton socks. So we're going to stick Jair out at right back. Bring Stuart Smith on at centre back. And swap those two over to get them. In fact, shuffle the whole lot around, which then brings us back to Jair's not having a very good game. So I'm tempted to bring on Armando as well. But it seems odd to try and change the game by bringing on two centre backs. So let's actually take off Carnavali and bring on Claudio Sanchez, who's having the season of his career since being made club captain. And hopefully he can come on and combine him and Richard between the two of them. They can try and get something going. In, the, in a more attacking space for us. We are still top of the group as it stands. So still kind of with everything in our hands, if we can beat Porto, but we didn't really want to have to rely on having to beat Porto to top the group. But now that's exactly what we are going to have to do. And I am going to tell them off because I'm not happy with that. We should have beaten them. And our dodgy little wobbly run continues. We have qualified though, which is... although. Have we qualified? Hold on. We have qualified. Had we already qualified? I love it when I'm proven right. Uh, Richard has started the last two domestic games and scored four goals. Yes, one of them is a penalty, but he looked absolutely fantastic. He's finally getting a run of games and he's finally starting to look like the player that we thought we were getting. If we can keep him fit, he's going to be fantastic. Um, confirmation last season in the Champions League for Galatasaray, five goals from seven games as part of his 34 goals over the course of the season in all competitions. So he's not only a clinical striker, he's proven in the Champions League as well. I mean, he's already scored twice in the Champions League for us this year and hopefully going into this game off the back of four, ga four goals in two games, we should start to see what we thought. We were. I mean, I'm, I'm talking as if he's not the best striker we've had since Damien. Look at the state of that. One, we just need strikers with only a first name. That's clearly the key. Let's forget we ever had Dave. Um, so we've got Tennessee in goal, a back four of Kansarovic, Bilbao, Hernandez and Solazano, Milo at the base of the midfield, Dominguez and Leica ahead of him, Chermont, Richard and Pedraza are the front three. Um, I'm looking at that bench, trying to figure out if there's a way to squeeze Williams on again, because once again, uh, Williams playing in the league games, he's just, he is dominant. It is... We've got two very, very good right wingers, but we've got Claudio Sanchez, who's very good on both wings. I'm looking at that again and thinking we don't need Jair and Smith on the bench. So I think that's probably, we bring Williams on for Smith and that's probably fine. Watch us lose both of our centre-backs. Uh, but my, what's wrong with Milo? What did that just say? What was that message? Oh, he's not match fit. Which is weird because I don't think he played in the last game. He must have picked up an injury that I didn't notice. Um... I fully expect a win in this game. It is our home game against Porto. So as we know, a win here and we top the group, I think, because our head-to-head -head on Barcelona is better because they beat us 2-0, we beat them 3-0. Is that right? So our head-to-head -head is better. So as long as we at least match their result against Zenit, which obviously they're going to beat Zenit. So as long as we beat Porto, we're going to top our group and top in the group, as we know, can be very significant. It's the difference between facing Man United or Bayern. It makes no difference at all. The Champions League's a nightmare. But Chermont has put us 1-0 up. Um, there you go. There's a better example. Tottenham or Brest. Tottenham, best team in Europe, signing all of our players. Or Brest. I think they're in France. Are they in France? And that's a lovely finish from Chermont, though, who's starting to get in the goals with the rest of the wingers now. I mean, to be fair, he did start the season in my head as our first choice left back. Uh, but... As the season's gone on, we're kind of pairing him and Kansarovic. And Sanchez is almost becoming my domestic winger and backup in the Champions League. 
I'm kind of going with Sanchez and Williams in the league and Chermont and Pedraza in the Champions League because I like to I like to have rel- even when I'm rotating I like to have relatively consistent teams it's probably a habit I need to get out of um, Dominguez has just scored an absolute world you know this is ridiculous and when did he grow a soul patch has he always had a soul patch he looks amazing but Richard doing well to play it into the path of Dominguez who just smacks it first time really really hard and we've got 2 nil up I mean obviously we went 2 nil up against Zenit so it's no guarantees just yet we do need to make sure we don't take our foot off the gas like we did against things with them because we played some fantastic football against Zenit I don't know why it doesn't default to the competition we're playing in Barcelona 2-0 up over Zenit, Erling Haaland with both of the goals for them. So at the moment, our goal difference is exactly level, but I'm like 95% sure goal difference isn't going to matter and it's all about head-to-head. And on that basis, we'll finish above Barcelona anyway. But you know how Kev maths is. (laughs) Despite that maths A level I'm always telling you about, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before when it comes to maths. Ryan Lawson's just scored for Barcelona. But there is the confirmation I'm not wrong because their goal difference is now better than ours, but we're still above them because of the head-to-head. So Apollo officially bigger than Ryan Lawson now. That means he can come back to us. Right, we're going to bring Williams on in the Champions League. I want to see if he can cut it at this level. And we're also going to bring on Sanchez for Kansarovic and drop Chermont back there. I'm keeping an eye on Richard because fitness, we still need to monitor him. And he's not having a wonderful game, but the backup option we've got is Carnavali who I, I think I mentioned in the last episode I think I'm probably done with Carnavali now he's frustrated me enough for long enough it's now 4-1 to Barcelona Haaland getting a hat-trick for them Dominguez playing it forward to Williams you don't see a lot of Williams running with the ball like this but it looks like he can he just charges through this is sensational from Williams I have never seen him score a goal like that that was stunning Every other goal he's scored this season has been a header. But we've, I mean, he's just, right, I've got to show, prove myself in the Champions League, have I? Here I go then. That was like watching Dombrowski charge forward for my Bayern team in non-league to legend. He's, I think, Raymer Williams is only 19 years old. 20 years old. He's just turned 20. Tottenham have lost their minds selling us him. They took Ryan Allen for hundred million pounds, and we got this guy for 27, 27 and a half. Yeah, we got Smith as well for about thirty, but we still got we got Smith, Williams, and like forty five million pounds for Allen in our dealings with Spurs over the last year. I don't care who you are, you got to, you got to admit we've got the best end of that deal, surely. And it's now three one. I forgot to make my third substitution. It's probably not a big deal at this stage. We've won the group anyway. Um, and Williams has just announced himself on the Champions League stage with us. I mean, there's been some good goals in this game, but that run from Williams, just such such pace, such power. I'm a big fan of Raymer Williams. Um, I'm happy with how you've just played. That should be our confirmation that we've won the group. We get another pile of cash. Dominguez is still awesome. And as ever, we don't know who we're going to be playing in the next round because we always... Seem to, oh, it's hitting a save anyway. I was going to have a look, but I think we, I think there's still more Champions League games to come next week. We always seem to be in the first batch. So who we play in the next round will be a mystery. I'm hoping for Brest. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.